Hi, welcome to this video where I'm going to talk you through the process of setting up a local large language model server on your workstation and integrating it into JetBrains Rider using continue.dev to assist you in your Unreal projects. It can help you out with insights into your code base, it can help you out with fixing bugs. Most usefully I find is the autocomplete function which can suggest upcoming code for you. Now, why would you use a local server rather than a service such as ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot? The main reason is security. If you're using a local model, your code, your data never leaves your machine. So that addresses a lot of concern to do with security and NDAs, etc. But also, these subscription services cost money. If you can run it on existing hardware that you already have on your machine, that's a plus. Thirdly, I think learning how to utilize different local language models and learn the strengths and weaknesses of the models that are available and staying on top of the cutting edge in these things is a really useful skill for any programmer to have in 2025. So let's jump into it. So before we get into the setup of the LLMs, we need to have a few prerequisites set up. Firstly, you need to install Olama, you need to install JetBrains Rider, and you need to install the continue.dev plugin for JetBrains Rider. I'll put links for all of these in the description, so if you need to find them, have a look in there, get them installed, and then come back to here. Now you've got these installed, let's just check they are set up and working correctly. So if you open a command prompt and type Olama, you should get the Olama uh, help screen come up. If you type Olama list, you should see a list of installed models. If you've just installed Olama, obviously you won't have any. I've got a couple installed already. As you can see in the background here, I already have JetBrains Rider installed um, in a little prototype project that I've got. And to check if Continue is installed, if you just go over here to the right, you will see Continue in the sidebar. So just click that and you'll see the Continue tool window come up and there's a chat window here. So we've got everything set up from a software point of view. It's also worth checking here that your Olama HTTP endpoint is working, which is localhost 11434. And you should see this little message saying Olama is running. Now we need to go and install some language models. So to find a language model, go to olama.com slash search. Now the first thing we need to install is an embedding model which is used for passing your code base and transforming it in a way that allows the other language models to reason about your code base. You don't really need to know the details of this, only that you need it. So the one we're going to use is this Nomic embed text model. So to make things simple here, you can simply copy this uh, script here, go to your command prompt, right click, and then run olama pull Nomic embed text. And you'll see it start downloading the model. There you go. Now if you run Olama list, you should see Nomic Embed Text latest installed there. Next, <clears throat> we need a model that's going to power our chat system. At the moment, I'm using uh, Quen 2.5 Coda, which is a code-specific model. And I'm using the 7 billion parameter model. So again, copy the command, right click, and let Olama pull down the model and install it. This is pulling over the internet, so this will depend on your speed of your connection, how long this takes. Okay, now that's installed. Actually, because I, the command here has said Olama run rather than pull, it has not only pulled the model down, it started it. So I just want to exit this now with slash byte. Now, oh, if I do Olama list, I can see I've got that Quen 2.5 coder latest model installed. Now, because that model is already running, I am just gonna have a look at what models are running here, which is Olama PS. So I can see that this Quinn 2.5 Coda latest model is loaded and is running right now. And it's telling me that it's running 100% on the GPU. And I can see that if I go into Task Manager at my GPU resources, you can see here when it loaded that model into the GPU, 
Um, as you can see, I've got a 12 gig GPU in an RTX 4070, and it's chewing up quite a lot of that. So for now, I'm just going to stop that model. And as you can see here, it's unloaded that from my GPU. Next, I want a slightly faster and smaller model to use for the autocomplete function. So I'm just going to use the 1.5 billion parameter model here. Now, again, I'm just going to change this to pull rather than run. So pull Quen 2.5 coder 1.5 billion. So now, if I do along the list, I have got the Nomic Embed Text Provider. I've got the Quen 2.5 Coder 1.5 billion model, which I'm going to use for autocomplete. And I also have the Quen 2.5 Coder 7 billion parameter model, which I'll use for chat. So I'm now done with Olama, and I can come into JetBrains Rider and continue.dev. You want to open continue here and then go to continue config and then open configuration file and it will open this config.json file. Now there's a few important things here we need to set. First of all you need to set the embeddings provider. So you may need to add this section down here. Embeddings provider, max batch size 32, provider, olama, and model nomic embed text, which is telling continue to use the nomic embed model for the embeddings provider, running on the local Olama instance. And next, you need to configure the chat model. So up here, I've got Quen 2.5 Coder Latest, which is just the display name. The provider is Olama, which is important. That's telling it to use our local model. Uh, the model name, which is the same as you uh, saw in Olama on the command line, and API base is that HTTP endpoint we tested earlier on, which is localhost colon 11434. There's no API key uh, on here at present. Uh, obviously in a production environment, you would want to have a key on here. So having unsecure endpoints like this is not a great idea, but um, unless you have opened the firewall up, it won't be accessible externally anyway. So that's your chat model. And then here uh, we have the tab autocomplete model, which as you can imagine, it's for the autocomplete functionality. So here it's a similar setup, provider Olama model, Quen 2.5 coder, 1.5 billion, and API base localhost 11434. So now you should be set up. What is worth doing at this point is going to more up here in continue config and then under code base index just do click to index. And depending on the size of your code base here, uh, you'll see it run through and say index incomplete. That's the running the embeddings provider of your code base, so it can reason about your code. So now we're inside my project. We've got continue.dev all set up. So let's try out the chat function to begin with. So uh, this prototype has got my 3D navigation plugin in it. So maybe I want to change something in the pathfinding. So um, how would I change the 3D pathfinding heuristics? Now, here you have the option of just pressing enter, which will just send that text prompt to the LLM and it will try to answer as best as it can. But what you want to do is press control and enter which includes the code base. So back here, when we index stuff here, this is generating the context for this code base. So when you come to ask a question and do control and enter, it will include appropriate files from your workspace in the context so it can answer appropriately. So where would I change the 3D pathfinding heuristic. So 
as you can see here in the context items, it has figured out some appropriate files to include in the context. And it has correctly here said that to change the 3D Pathfinder heuristic, you need to modify the heuristic score function in sfond pathfinder.cpp. So it shows me where the current function is and it suggests um, a new pathfinding heuristic type here, uh, Cherishev option, which isn't in there. And it's done a pretty good job of integrating that into my existing code. Um, so I can click here. As you can see, here's the heuristic score function. And yeah, it's done a pretty good job of answering the question. So now we can test out the autocomplete functionality. Initially, just using an example that we talked about a second ago, let's have a look at going into this heuristic score function and seeing what it suggests. And here it is uh, suggesting the Chebyshev option here. So I can just do tab, bam. I've got the Chebyshev option here under the heuristic score. Obviously, I'd need to implement this within this enum because it's not there yet, but um, that's pretty handy having things like that suggested. So here's another example where it can be quite useful. So um, here in a constructor, I'm creating a default subobject for an attachment point for weapons on a pawn. Um, if I just come here um, and go to the next line, it correctly suggests the secondary. Um, it's a real time saver having things like this. Now, one thing to bear in mind uh, when you're running these models um, is that you have limited hardware resources. So if I do OLMR PS now, um, I currently have three models running locally and they're all on my GPU. So if I look in Task Manager, I'm pretty much using all of my GPU memory just for large language models right now. So um, when I'm coding, I don't typically use the chat function that much. So I may want to just stop the chat one, which is the largest six gig one here. So if I stop Quentin 2.5 coder latest, there we go, that stopped. And you can see my GPU memory usage come right down. I probably don't need the non make embed text either, so I can do O llama stop non make embed text. There we go, and we get a bit more back. So I'm just running this 1.5 billion parameter model now, which is driving the uh, autocomplete. So there's a quick rundown of the basics of getting set up using local large language models with JetBrains Rider in your Unreal projects. As you can see, there's some really nice utilities in there already. The autocomplete I find really useful. Potentially one of the most interesting things from a production point of view is being able to interrogate the code base and ask questions of um, a new code base because everyone who's worked on a number of projects knows that there's quite a big embedding time when you're working with a very large code base, just getting used to it. So having a large language model that you can simply ask questions of and it will do the heavy lifting for you. Navigating through the code and figuring out how things work can be a real time saver. As you saw when I was looking at Olama, there are tons of models out there to try out, all have their different strengths and weaknesses. Obviously the cutting edge of AI is moving really fast at the moment, so there are new models coming out on a daily basis. Do experiment, try out some different models, see what works for you, and if you've got any recommendations, drop it in the comments. Thanks for watching.